right, if you would, uh, if you turn, you turn your Bibles to the book of Acts. We want to study just a little bit in the book of Acts in chapter 3 and uh, 2, maybe, maybe 14. Anyway, we're going to study in Acts. And it's good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning, and we're glad that we're, we're able to be here, and we're glad this morning that we have a wonderful building that we can come into and uh, be comfortable and uh, have good lighting and uh, whether it's cold or hot while well, we can uh, be comfortable and I'm thankful this morning for these things and, uh, we have so much to be uh, 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 thankful for and so many times we forget to thank the Lord but in in our book in the chapter at in the book of Acts chapter 3 I want to read to you the first verse here about uh, a, a, blind, a, a, a man that was uh, crippled from his birth and what happened to him. And, and now in verse 1 of chapter 3, now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. Of, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the gate and the temp of the temple which is called beautiful to ask alms of them that entered into the temple <coughs> who, pe who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple ask an alms so we want to look at this this morning is this old this man here uh, he's uh, in bad condition and the thing of it was he's been there all of his life and to me it represents it represents a, a man that has never known the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior and they're in a condition where that they have no way of getting out themselves they have no way of getting any help and he has been carried there each day uh, and laid there to, at the, the gate of the temple and uh, he begs alms. And uh, these things that he's begging for has a far cry from what he got. And uh, he says, uh, and uh, uh, things of, of people God uses for his glory. And this is one of the things that God uses for his glory here. And we sometimes think about how that people get in bad conditions, how they get sickly, how they get uh, in whatever need and and the thing of it is that God gets glory out of those things because listen he is the one that knows all about them and we this morning as uh, God's people need to understand when they come our way that we always have the Father to look over us and to pray to the Lord Jesus Christ uh, that we might be uh, helped in these conditions but he says here that Peter and John went together and uh, they were I want to I want to show you something they were in this they were having a, 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 a good time at the temple here and look over in two uh, just a minute here in chapter two and I want to show you something in verse I believe it's at 40 uh, yeah in verse 40 and with many other words did he testify and exhort saying save yourself from this untoward generation or this crooked generation then they that gladly received his word were baptized and the same day there were added unto them about three thousand souls and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowshipping and in breaking of bread and in a prayer now we see here this morning that they were having a great revival here and knowing this that the that the the man that was crippled uh was was anxious to get there again because he he knew there were uh, uh groups of them and they at, that he could get some alms from them so he was there ready to go but he didn't he didn't realize how good a shape he was going to be in because he says here in verse Four after John and Peter seen him there, and he said he was carried laid and laid daily. Uh, then he says, and Peter fasting his eyes upon him with John, 
said, look on us. Now, it wasn't for anything that they were going to do that was so special, but they wanted to know what he got came from God the Father. And so they said, you, you look on us and, and see what, what's going to happen. And Peter fastened his eyes upon, upon him with John, said, look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. And Peter said, silver and gold have I none. Now, this man, and, and I, I stop in the middle of a, a, a sentence or a, a paragraph, but this man, don't you know, when they said silver and gold have I none, well, what, do they, what are they going to do for me? They, they haven't got any money. But here's the thing of it. Sometimes we look at things in the wrong way. Sometimes when something comes along that's going to really in, encourage us, it's going to really help us, it's going, really going to make us be on shouting ground, we look at it in the wrong way and say, no, that's, that ain't no good. That ain't no good because Peter said, hey, I ain't got no money. I ain't got no money whatsoever. But he said, you look on me. Then he said here uh, in verse, uh, the bottom part of six there, but such as I have, I give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And so this man was there, and, and in, this, in this particular thing here, uh, as, as, John, as Peter was taking his hand and raising him up, that thing took, took hold on him, and he began to run and walk and dance and glorify the Lord because, listen, uh, and, and this was not, uh, a lot of people think, well, he was saved there. But I don't believe that this is what salvation is all about. Because notice here uh, in, in the uh, seventh verse, and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. So this morning he was praising God for a miracle and most of the time when you, when you hear of salvation uh, or see uh, salvation, it doesn't appear as a, as a miracle, but that is a miracle in the soul of, uh, of the human being. But here, this was a miracle that he was able to stand up and, and leap and, and, and praise God in, uh, in, in this thing that uh, the Lord had done for him. So he said uh, again in verse 7, and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankles, bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Now, why did he not? You know, a lot of times, uh, uh, if you have something happen to you like that, that good, hey, the temple's the last place you don't want to run to. But the thing of it is you will run, tell, show everybody what's happened to him. But we'll see here later on that the people, when he went into the temple, knew who he was. Now notice here uh, in, in verse 9. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Now here, this was your miracle here that God got the glory and, and, and all these people saw this. It was glorifying God because, listen, they knew that this man had laid there for all his life and couldn't get up and couldn't walk. And so they praised God for this. And he says, and all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which set for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they, feel, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And this morning, you know, we as God's people can uh, do the same thing. We can pray for God to do things for other people, which we should do, and which we should do it every time we pray. If we have anybody that uh, we love that's in, uh, in dire need of prayer, we need to pray for them. And if it takes half the day, well, we need to spend half the day praying for them. But the thing of it is, when we see when we see this thing happen that we're praying for, listen, it's a great joy 
But we realized this morning that our prayer didn't do it, but that God heard our prayer and he honored that prayer and he done this prayer and he performed a miracle uh, for those that, uh, that we're praying for. So here we see again, uh, and in verse 10, and they knew that it was he which set it on, set for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as the lamb, at, and as the lame man which was healed, Peter helped Peter and John, all the people ran together unto him, them in the porch that is called Solomon's greatest wonder. And when Peter saw it, and if we can, if we we can understand this, and we we need to practice the same thing. If God answers a prayer from us, we need to give God the glory, because He said that when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, "Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this, or why look ye so earnestly on us, as though?" By our power or holiness, we had made this man to walk. And so Peter was quick to tell these people, hey, it wasn't us that did it. It wasn't anything that we did. We just we just had the prayer. But he says, uh, and, 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 uh, uh, and, and when Peter, let me, let me get back in here. Or why look you so earnestly on us, okay? Then in 13, the, the God of Abraham and our I, and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son, Jesus, whom ye delivered up, denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. So we see here again that Peter is not taking any of the, the uh, praise for this, but he's also using a reference here which, which uh, shows that God's people are being uh, 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 pointed to this as a, as a, as a miracle. And, they, and, uh, and, 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 and also here it says in God, the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son. And so they got a, uh, Jesus got glory and, and God got glory also. Then in verse 14, but ye denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you. And so he is, he is putting something to them this morning, people, that they didn't want to hear. And he's talking about Jesus Christ, his son, uh, uh, being uh, uh, crucified on the cross of Calvary. But the thing of it is, this morning, that this was a thing that that God had planned. This is a thing that God had already uh, foreknew, and this is a thing that God that was the only hope for human beings. Here, when He says this, but ye denied the Holy One and the Just, and ye desired a murderer to be granted unto you and kill the prince of life whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are a witness. And so here again, the man is healed, <clears throat> the people saw the miracle, and Peter witnessed to them, telling them about Jesus Christ. And so this morning as we think upon these things, we would uh, like to say, look at Matthew's gospel just for a minute here, if I'm right on this, Matthew 20, Matthew, uh, well, I'm not right. I'm right. I'm not. And I think it's 27, Matthew 6. Uh, Matthew 6. Let's, uh, let's see what Matthew 27 says. I've got it marked. Just marked. Twenty-seven fifteen. Let's see what it says. Now, at the, 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 that feast, the governor was want to release unto them the people a prisoner whom they would. And they had them a notable prisoner called Barabbas. And this is what he's talking about here. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom were ye that I release unto you? And Barabbas, or Jesus, which is called Christ. For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. 
And when he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with this just man, for I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the multitude that they would ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? And they said, Barabbas. So Pilate said unto them, what shall I do with Jesus, which is called Christ? And they all said unto him, Let him be crucified. This is the same thing that Peter is telling them that happened to him. And the governor, listen to this, and the governor said, Why, what evil has he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Crucify him, be crucified. And when Pilate saw it, he could prevail nothing but that he rather a tournament was made and he took water and washed his hands before the multitude saying i'm innocent of the blood of this just person see to it so here again back in our lesson here this is what that peter was trying to tell these people about when you kill the prince of life in verse 15 whom god raised hath raised from the dead whereof we are witnesses and this and his name through faith in his name made hath made this man strong whom you see and know yeah the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all so again they peter is saying to them in verse 17 and now brethren i know or i walk walk I know that through ignorance you did it, as did also your rulers. But those things which God before had shown by the mouth of all his prophets, that Christ should suffer, he has so fulfilled. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So we see here, the reason I'm reading all this, you see here what happened about this old man that was laying there begging alms and what, how God used this person to stir all of this up and to let Peter be a witness and to testify about Jesus Christ. And so uh, an encouraging thing this morning I, I, I see in all of this is that when things do happen, and if they happen to us or to a loved one, be careful how you look at these things and be careful to see that God is able to do what he wants and, and you don't know what God has got in his mind, how that he's going to affect someone out here that's uh, dead or half dead or sick or, or lost and uh, just, just watch because, listen, the Lord knows what he's doing. Now, I want, to, I want to read some this morning in Acts 14 uh, uh, concerning another uh, uh, thing that happened with Jesus, with Jesus and the blind man. Okay, in, in 14, in, in verse 8, <clears throat> Acts 14 and 8, And there sat a, a certain man at Lysidia, impotent in his feet, be, being a cripple from his mother's womb. Now you notice this is the same condition. He'd been that way all of his life. And in, in the other reading we read, it was the same thing from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The same heard Paul speaking, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. Now this is the same, the same man that heard Paul speak who, and talking about that, who steadfastly beholding him, perceived that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet, and he leaped with, and walked. And I was just thinking about when I, was, I was turned over here to listen. It's Paul speaking, not Jesus. And, 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 and verse 11, and when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voice, saying in a speech of the Laconians, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. And they call Barabbas, Jupiter, and Paul Mar Marcarsius because he was the chief speaker. 
Then the speaker of Jupiter, which was before the, their city, brought oxen and garland unto the gate, and would have done sacrifice with the people. And again here, uh, there is going to be an attempt to give man the praise for this, uh, this miracle that has happened. And so Paul, uh, in verse 14, he says here, which, which when the apostle Barnabas and Paul heard of it, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people, crying out and saying, Sirs, why do ye these things? We also are men of like passion with you and, and preach unto you that ye should turn from those vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all the things that are in, who in time past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Now you see, as I'm reading this here, God is getting the glory for all the things that he's done through this crippled man. And, uh, you know, it's not like some big king that's sitting on a throne and says something or talks or does something, but it's a, an old crippled man down there that ain't able to even walk, ain't able to, to, to even get up and get himself a drink of water. But in verse 17, he says, Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness in that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. And with these sayings, sacred restraint, sacred restraint did they, the people that they had not done sacrificing to him. And so they were going to, they were going to do all this killing, these cows and everything, and, and uh, uh, praise Paul. But Paul turned their, turned their minds to the one that really knows how to, uh, who needs to be praised. And we, uh, as... Um, uh, Christians, sometimes we we don't do that like we should. We want to give praise to medicines. We want to give praise to doctors. We want to give praise to this and that. But listen, it's God that gets the praise and the glory. Now, he said here in verse 19, I was, And therefore came thither certain of the Jews from Antioch and Iconian, who persuaded the people, and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing... Had he been dead. Howbeit, as the disciples stood around about him, he rose up and came into the city, and the next day he departed with Barnabas and Debris. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Assyria and to Iconium and Antioch, confirming the souls of disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. And that we must through much affliction enter into the kingdom of God. So again, the results, the results of things that happen to Christians, God blesses, God will, will help us, and uh, he will, will show us <clears throat> some visitors at the door, I think. And they, they're waiting, but anyway. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and, and had caught many, they returned again to Lysurdia and Iconian and Antioch, confirming the souls of disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. And when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. <clears throat> Come right on in. Oh. Now, is there one other thing I'd like to read to you in Romans? If you would, if you can turn your Bibles to the book of Romans, in chapter 8. 35. Romans 8, 35. And of course, we, we know we've been reading about those that were sick and laid at the temple gates and, and uh, how that they were healed and all this. And then in verse uh, 35 of, of, of chapter 8 of the book of Romans, 
Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or, or peril of sword? Now, we've been teaching about these, uh, reading about these two people that were laid at the temple gate and they were uh, in misery and they were needed help and, and they got their help. And through all of this, the Lord performed miracles by healing them and, and exalting his name. So now we see here in verse 36, the uh, uh, book of Romans uh, 9, 8, 36, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. And so by our tribulations and by our uh, mishaps and all this that the world uh, causes us to have, we can still be conquerors if we know the Lord Jesus Christ and the forgiveness of sin. So he says here in verse 38, he says, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor any other uh, prince, nor principalities, nor powers, nor, nor things present, nor things to come, nor heights, nor depths, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in our Christ Jesus our Lord. And so this should give us a, a greater assurance this morning that we that are saved and we that are having tribulations and we that are having problems and listen this morning uh i don't i don't hardly ever see anybody that's not having problem and tribulation because this this world that's all it's got to offer and uh we we have to uh know that and to be aware of it and to uh stay straight with the lord and, and try to try to uh serve him and uh, uh where that he's uh, uh, our help in time of need. And so this morning we we hope that this will be a blessing to you. Hope that uh, something has been said maybe that might comfort your heart or might uh, point you in a, a direction where that you might get some uh, help or some relief or whatever because Jesus is sitting beside the Father and God is on the throne and he is he is making intercessions for us this morning. So when you pray, pray earnestly. And uh, the Lord Jesus Christ hears these prayers. And uh, he, he presents them to the Father. So uh, your prayer don't go unheard uh, if you're a Christian. So with this, I'll say uh, it's been good to, uh, to read the scripture from the, from the Word of God. And hopefully you will have uh, got something from it. Thank you all.